So today, the 12th of October 2022, um, we will go down as one of the most important dates in the entire history of the campaign for Scottish independence, for it's today that the legal challenge to Westminster's denial of a Section 30 mandating a second referendum on Scottish independence uh, scheduled for October 2023 well, begins to be heard at the UK Supreme Court in London. Now, Alex Salmon, former First Minister and former head of the SNP, has criticised Nicola Sturgeon uh, for taking this approach, and on a certain level, I understand why. Morally, it's rebarbative that we in Scotland have to seek the permission of uh, the, inst the court of uh, the UK Supreme Court uh, for uh, the ability to hold a second referendum. His argument is that the only entity that we should be se seeking permission from is the Scottish people. Uh, I agree, morally. But we are where we are. We, 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 are, we exist in a certain reality and we have to operate on that basis. And Nicola Sturgeon has to exhaust all legal political channels uh, before embarking on any plan B, which her plan B, which is very astute, is to, in the event that permission is denied or cooperation is denied or withheld, to hold a second refer referendum on Scottish independence, that she will fight the general election in 2024 on the single issue of independence, hoping to achieve an enhanced mandate, uh, which I think she will. And we have to take people with us. And if Westminster continues continues to deny cooperation or permission, it's permission really we're talking about, then that will only inflame passions in Scotland. Uh, and it will win more support on the basis of democracy because it will reveal the UK to be less a union of equal constituent nations and more a prison house of nations along the lines of the old uh, Tsarist Empire in the, of the 19th century. So this rancid, regressive, barbaric state known as the UK, which grows ever more extreme, ever more cruel, ever more divided, ever more disorganised, will be desperate to keep Scotland in its clutches because the diminishment it will suffer on the world stage will be inordinate. The threat to Trident will be hugely significant because it's by... Um, the existence of Trident, that the UK maintains its seat as a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Um, we understand that foreign policy is what drives more than any other policy, more than any other aspect of its identity, the UK's modus operandi and its sense of national prestige on the world stage. Um, and that's why Jeremy Corbyn was demonised when he was Labour leader, because he was a threat to foreign policy because of his um, propensity for peace over war, etc. So I think Nicola Sturgeon knows that she will be denied at the Supreme Court the legal right. Um, the UK Supreme Court is by definition an institution of the UK state. And like every other institution of the UK state, its primary function ideologically uh, is to maintain the UK's UK's existence in per perpetuity. And so it's not in the business of sanctioning the dissolution of the UK. And on that basis alone, the legal argument, which I'm really interested to hear at the end of, the, of, of, of this case, uh, of this hearing, um, to see what they come up with. They may come up with, they'll come up with constitutional arguments, but those arguments, like snowflakes, dissolve as soon as they are made because we don't have a constitution. The UK does not have a constitution. Where is it? Where can I go and buy a copy? Um, there is no one. Uh, it's bullshit. It always has been bullshit. They make it up literally as they go along. So uh, we have to be patient. Nicola Sturgeon has the right as a leader of the SNP and leader of the Scottish Government. Uh, to to devise a strategy, to take it forward. And uh, I hope she has success, but as I say, I think it's inevitable that, that she will um, she will meet with disappointment. Though, as I say, I think she knows and she just feels she needs to go exhaust all channels. But we need to get away from this fucking shit show of a UK. Um, it's not fit for purpose. Uh, the Queen's funeral, I think, just confirmed 
that this is a state in which we have a ruling class that is the most regressive and the most impervious to change and reform of any in the entire industrialised world. The idea that King Charles should be the head of state of a putative independent Scotland is repellent to me. I think it should be repellent to every right-thinking person. Scotland needs to move forward as a modern democratic republic. Shorn of the dead weight of monarchy, the dead weight of the gowns and wigs legal system that is incompatible with the 21st century, uh, the dead weight of this private school system that uh, entrenches inequality, that entrenches the class system, the dead weight of neoliberal economics that is ineffably crisis prone, the dead weight of all that shite that we've been conditioned to believe is compatible with a modern society. It's not compatible with anything but with cruelty and regression. FDR Roosevelt once said, and I quote, to some generations much is given, of other generations much is expected. And to paraphrase, this generation of Scots has a date with destiny. Peace out.